my goodness, I'm just busy getting ready for work and I put on Paula Hawkins' new book on Audible, um, A Slow Burning Fire. That opening chapter, I've only like literally listened to about 10 seconds of it and it is so good. It's like this girl is blood sodden and staggering and something has happened to her. This book is going to be good. Welcome to another Boho Bookworm reading vlog. I'm getting ready for work and I have made a delicious smoothie with spinach and blueberries and all sorts of stuff that you probably think is disgusting in a smoothie like apple cider vinegar but I love it. I have hard boiled one egg and I have made like a veggie pasta bowl that I'm going to take to work for lunch today. Now I need to go choose my outfit. I bought a couple of new like winter clothes yesterday because winter's coming. So I got like nice chunky sweaters because it is sweater weather time. Anyway, I'm going to choose an outfit and continue listening to this book because I am hooked already. All right, well, don't I feel stupid now? I've listened to about an hour of this audiobook this morning and the beginning, that opening scene is not what you think it is. I don't want to give spoilers away, but I was like, what? Yeah, it like really throws you in a different direction. So we've got, I, there's two different characters we're following here. We're following this young girl called Laura and something must be very wrong with her. I think she's like a pyromaniac. She, uh, it's very clear that she has like uncontrollable urges to set fire to things and probably hurt herself. And then there's also this other lady that lives on a canal boat and the boat next to hers, a body is found inside. And it turns out that Laura had been with this guy who they found dead on Friday night. Now the body's found on Sunday morning. So he's like been stabbed multiple times to death. So the police are now at Laura's house and they've found her t-shirt covered in blood in the bathroom and they're taking her in um, to go scrape her fingernails and stuff like that. So it's very intriguing so far. I am thoroughly enjoying it. I mean, Paula Hawkins is an author that, I mean, the girl on the train was phenomenal in my opinion. Then we got her second book, which I think pff, the majority of the world who enjoyed The Girl on the Train was like really highly anticipating. What was it called? Something about water, I can't remember, because it was rubbish. I just thought it was so boring. So I was a bit nervous about this one because it would really make or break Paula Hawkins for me as an author. However, I'm really enjoying it, probably even more than The Girl on the Train, which is really saying something. So I'm going to go to work now, get into my car, put this audio back, audiobook back on and just listen as much as I can. Anyway, time to go to work. This is one of my nice new jumpers. I really like it actually. It's just cosy and comfortable. Ah, it's scary now getting to winter. It's really dark in the mornings. I'm going to end up alone over winter. Ugh. Almost time to put my heating back on. Anyway, let's go to work and listen to more of this book. I'll catch up with you guys later. Oh, that sucks. This is where I normally come for my lunch break. But they've like drained the pond of all the water. Maybe they were trying to find a body. Ah, my dark and twisted mind. Hello everyone. I have just come out on my lunch break and the sun is kind of peeking through the clouds. So I've tried to just grab a little bit of the sun because I don't think there'll be much of sun left for the rest of the year to be fair. So I've gotten a little bit further in the Paula Hawkins book. I don't know if maybe it's because it is multitasking and I was driving and stuff while I was busy listening to it. I got a little bit lost by how many characters there are in it. There, there seems to be a lot of characters just popping out of the woodwork. And I'm like, oh, who are you? Where do you come from? Um, I can't remember if I had the same issue with a previous book. But yeah, I, I think that part is a little bit confusing to me. We're following quite a cast of characters, but I'm still very intrigued with the story as a whole. So now I'm just reading my physical book, which is still That Night by Julian McAllister, because I am terrible at actually taking time to myself to, to read. But I am giving it my attention now in my lunch break. And I do have to say something though that might be a little bit hard hitting. So this book is about these siblings that uh, bury this body um, that one of them hits with the car by accident, assumingly, whatever. But I think it's kind of, you know, these kind of books, these thrillers that I love to read and situations where the characters are like burying bodies and trying to hide evidence and stuff. They're entertaining, fun, thriller reads 
but then things like what's happening in the world right now the Gabby Petito case her body's just been discovered her boyfriend's gone missing we don't really know what's happened or what the cause of death is at the time that I'm filming this particular video um, which is probably going to come out quite a bit later so by this point there will be more information available to us but it does make me feel differently towards this book in a sense that it's like really hard hitting that things like this do actually happen and I think sometimes when you read thriller books as often as I do about situations like that it's not that you don't you don't think that these things can't happen but you're just reading it in this entertaining way because they're not real characters but these things do happen and we I don't know the story of Gabby Petito yet but it's petrifying and heartbreaking uh, yeah I'm interested to see where this case goes but it definitely gives a new light on a book like That Night by Julia McAllister Alright, I just got to work. I've been listening to more of this book and I'm, I'm really trying to keep up with all the characters. There's like a Carla, there's an Angela, there's a Theo, there's a Laura, there's everyone. And I'm just like, whoa, we're holding on way too many characters. And also, I think my, my mental health is suffering a little bit today. But I'll explain that later because uh, there was a lot of traffic and I am now almost late for work. So let me get to work. I will talk to you this evening. I will probably listen to a little bit more of this book on the way home from work and hopefully I can sort my head out and make it a good day. Okay, I'm back in my favourite spot for lunch. And you know what, the day actually started out really nicely. And we went for a nice big walk, my group at work. And um, it was just really fun and we were joking and laughing. And I was like, okay, it's gonna be a good day, it's gonna be a good day. But like, I can't shake this like funny feeling. It's like this this feeling of just dread and I can't I can't describe it any other way really I just I feel really lonely I think and I think I have like I'm, I've, I speak about this quite often about like being worried that I'm not gonna find someone and blah 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 we don't need to go over that again but I think it's just like this this fear that I'm gonna be lonely for a very long time um, and just being very disheartened and not hopeful about finding someone, especially where I'm situated in the UK. It just doesn't really seem very possible. Um, you know, if I if I could, and there were opportunities in places like Newquay and Cornwall, I would I would up and leave. Um, but there's so many factors like finances, job, um, everything, and I, yeah, I guess I just I don't really know where I'm going in life right now. And I just, like at work, the whole day behind the desk, I'm literally, I'm trying really hard to focus on work because it helps to distract me. But I just can't shake this like feeling in my like, in my gut, in my stomach, in my heart that something's just missing and I'm just struggling a little bit. So yes, that is where I'm at. And uh, yeah, I just came out here to have a bit of a chill enjoy the sun, I left my glasses and I'm probably going to be blind at the end of this session but we're going to read more and I'm um, just trying to relax, yeah, try and forget all the worries in the world because there's people out there with far bigger worries than my stupid loneliness so I just have to remember that. Apparently Melbourne was just hit with a massive earthquake and I mean that's devastating, I, I hope everyone is okay. Um, from some of the pictures I've seen, it looks really bad. So to be complaining about my stupid shit is really silly, really. Anyway, reading time. Hello everyone, it's the next day. I'm back here in my favorite spot. It's a bit blustery and cold, but I've got my nice big chunky sweater on and I'm, I'm being a lot better than yesterday. Um, just like, I don't know, the truth is that thanks on as I'll take my sunglasses off really the truth is that something like kind of negative happened on internet dating that I don't really want to go into and it's kind of just thrown me off of the whole internet dating experience I've never really had something really terrible happen um, for the most part I think I've been quite lucky but yeah something pretty rubbish 
did occur and um, it's just kind of really made me not interested to, to date especially online dating right now but then I'm like well you're gonna end up single and alone at 31 you're gonna spend Christmas alone again and I think all those feelings are just like getting to me but yesterday was a particularly bad day today I'm doing a lot better and um, I'm continuing to crack on with the Paula Hawkins book however I don't know I was really invested in the beginning with Laura's story but then all these other characters came into the picture and there's just too many of them and too many like storylines to keep up with that I'm just I don't know I kind of like lost my headspace with it a little bit I guess but I'm slowly slogging my way through it and it's not that it's not good I think that the writing is fantastic and for the most part it is very intriguing it's just too much and my brain is already just loaded with its own personal shit so yeah now I've got to like read a book tackling about 17 other people that's an exaggeration but you know what I mean like a lot of other people's dilemmas and problems so that's where I'm at really but let's carry on listening and enjoying a little bit of this sun I might even take my chunky jumper off Okay, I'm pretty sure this is now the final good day. It's been a really nice week of being able to sit outside and enjoy the sun, but looking at the weather forecast, everything's going to change. I think it's just going to be rain, rain, rain for the unforeseeable future, or the foreseeable future really. So I'm just going to lap it up. With regards to um, Paula Hawkins' new book, I've got maybe an hour and a bit left of the audiobook and I'm actually really like I can't actually be asked with it anymore to be fair like Laura's story was really interesting she's a very unique and entertaining character and I think that if if I'd made her I'd have quite a a big place in my heart but for her as a character she's just very quirky very unique she has this like funny leg because she got hit by a car and it's kind of affected her mentally and all sorts of stuff. So there's a lot of cool things about her that make her a really interesting character. But I don't know, now she's like, she's in custody and I don't know really what the hell is going on. The police are like interviewing her and they're saying they're gonna charge her and she's like freaking out and she thinks someone else is like basically framing her. So then that's when this other character comes in but there's, there's just too many characters and I, I couldn't keep up with this book. So I'm going to power through. I'm going to finish it over the weekend because it's Friday now. But I'm just, unfortunately, it's just a book that didn't really tickle my interest as much as I thought it would from the first chapter. That was amazing. And I wish that the book had kind of solely focused on more of Laura's story rather than all these other characters that I couldn't connect with really. Yeah, it's just a bit too much. But um, mental health wise, I'm I'm doing better. Um, I think the other day I, I really did have a moment and I was really upset. I cried it out. Um, now I've just been focusing a lot on work. I've done so much overtime this week, and I think that's needed. I just needed to put my head down and focus on something else. Tonight is Friday night, and I'm going to get home have a glass of wine and just catch up on mindless television, probably sob my heart out again because something will trigger me, but <laughs> more like mindless swiping left and right on the dating apps probably, but <laughs> there we go. Such is life. I know my time will come. I know it. It's just getting there, <laughs> which is the issue. I just, yeah. I'm a relationship person, I always have been, 
and I always seem to have someone in my life and usually I've always been in long-term relationships so this is like the first time I'm alone and I've been alone for quite a while now like besides a little quick stint with Adam really um, and Adam and I are now friends which is lovely uh, we're really close and supportive of each other and stuff and had it we got together and had a nice chat and realized you know what like yeah we definitely weren't right together but that doesn't mean that we didn't have a connection and that we can't be friends so that was quite a nice amicable, amicable little thing in the end so we're both still on our hunt I guess one day it will happen I am positive right now just soaking up the vitamin D on my the quality whatever you call it I don't know I'm just rambling now I'm gonna go and read my book see you later hey everyone it's been a couple of days I took a bit of a break had a bit of a moment as you might be aware my my mental health has been not at its greatest lately I've just been very down in the dumps so yesterday was just like the last straw I absolutely had a, I think it was a panic attack to be honest I just broke I ended up going out and doing something I hope is going to be good. I got a new phone, finally. My phone was cracked to smithereens. It was ancient and had, it was kind of tainted because a long time ago when I got robbed and attacked in South Africa, my phone got stolen and then the police managed to find it eventually when the guy tried to sell it in like a little dodgy phone shop. So I got the phone back, but it was always a bit like, mm, after, you know, after that. So yeah, I eventually got a new phone. I've always been a Samsung girl, now I have this iPhone, uh, not the 13, sadly I could not afford that, but I got the 12, so yeah, I don't know if it's going to improve the quality of my camera footage and all that stuff, it is very dark today. To be honest, what I think is that I'm getting seasonal blues, being alone and it's rainy, dreary, cold, everything's changing, summer's gone and realizing chances are I'm going to end up alone for for Christmas and winter and all that stuff it's yeah it's not it's not been great on me to be honest so yeah I don't think this is going to really show the quality of this camera right now and I also haven't really fiddled around with the camera properly but yeah it's just really dark at the moment so apologies for that however um, a couple of days ago I did finish A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins and I did, yeah, I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would from that opening chapter that blew me away. There were way too many characters, which is exactly the same thing as the problem I had with her previous book. Is it Open Into the Water or something like that? Yeah, it's way too many characters to keep up with. It was like you needed to have like post-it notes all over the wall, like a bloody Game of Thrones novel to piece everything together and remember everyone's backstories. Way too many subplots. And just kind of went downhill so unfortunately Paula Hawkins I don't think I'm that excited for whatever you bring out next sorry not sorry anyway how am I doing now I mean there is now a petrol pandemic in the UK fantastic my car is on reserve tank and yeah I had my friend Mark who you might have seen in some of my previous videos in like deer parks and fishing and stuff he came over um with two jerry cans of petrol and it kind of felt like we were in some kind of episode of the walking dead like going out in the middle of the night with jerry cans to find petrol what is happening with the world people are just being stupid but i think all of that kind of stuff just overwhelmed me like the pandemic the petrol pandemic being alone the season changing being cold spending money that i really shouldn't Although I'm really proud of myself. I mean, this year I've achieved so much. I shouldn't be as sad as I am really, because if you think about the things that I, it might seem materialistic, but I came here with nothing more than a backpack and I think like a thousand euro to my name, which had to make me survive until like eventually the world opened back up. I arrived one day before the first lockdown in the UK, uh, spent four months living on a sofa and then eventually got this flat and a job and worked myself up from the bottom. I just bought a four by four, um, granted the petrol lights on and I have no, pe uh, sorry, the engine light is on and I have no petrol in it. So I don't know if I made a good choice there, but we'll see. I bought a 
GHD hair straightener, which is something I've always wanted so I can stop singeing my hair. I bought a Kate Spade handbag. I know it's all materialistic stuff, but these are the things that, for me, I just, I really wanted to achieve and get them for myself. I got not a Nutri Bullet, but a Magic Bullet, a little small one, because the Nutri Bullet was a little bit out of my budget. I got Lego. <laughs> I got um, an iPhone 12, I got a MacBook Air, there's, yeah, a lot has happened and I've achieved a lot. I've gotten plants, I've gotten bedding that I absolutely love, that are all like leaves and planty. Yeah, I'm building up a book, a bookcase, like, I mean, I don't have a bookshelf yet, that's on the list of things to get but I'm, I'm getting a good collection of books under my belt, I'm taking my channel more seriously and the world is just opening up to me. I may have depleted a lot of my savings at this point but we're getting there and now it seems like things are getting a little bit brighter but anyway, this I'm, I'm going to have bad days, bad weeks, probably bad months but I think I'm going to try and make the following month, just one where I really focus on my health and my well-being, doing things in moderation, exercising more. I've, I haven't been exercising nearly enough. I think I went for a run once in September. <sighs> Oops. But anyway, I'm rambling. I will go. Didn't like the Paula Hawkins book. Have a lovely day and I'll talk to you soon.